episode. You know, this is, excuse me, a damn fine cup of coffee. How's it going guys? Back at it again with another video. So this is gonna be a response slash rebuttal video slash education video. So the YouTube channel Pure Living for Life, they are another off-grid homesteading couple that lives in um, Colorado. And they just put out a video just about a week ago. It's already got over 360,000 views. And what's really annoying to me about this video is that I did watch it and by the end of it, I wanted to take my fist put it through my computer screen. So there's a lot of things that Jesse said in the video that are just completely factually incorrect about off-grid solar. And one reason why I really wanna make this is because there are code violations and there are also fire hazards as a result of code, a code violation. So I'm also doing this for mainly an educational purpose. So when you watch a video like this, you might think to yourself, you know what, this is normal with off-grid solar right it's normal but i would say to you if it's normal then in the last four months since we've been living on uh completely off solar power why have i not made a video troubleshooting my system so the reason for that is i worked with liam who is incredibly intelligent and smart around uh, solar systems and solar power so we we're able to design a system that was sized properly and works without any maintenance at all it just it just works and that's how a solar system should work. You should be able to wake up in the morning and just be like, yeah, my solar system works. It should not be an ongoing ordeal. So we're gonna go through the video. I'm gonna splice in some clips from their video where Jesse is talking about certain things and just kind of clear up the confusion because there's a lot of things that he said there. I'm like, that's not even close to being true. And there are some things that he did talk about in the video that are actually valuable, but there's just some things in there that just need to be cleared up so people don't get the wrong impression. So for this rebuttal video, I'm eating homemade burritos and we've got some Blue Moon Belgian White Wheat Ale. So we just went to Lake Patagonia this last weekend, which is amazing because there's a lake in the middle of the desert and this is just left over. It is money, so right now we're actually having to turn our generator at night. It's bloody sunny outside. We shouldn't have to run the generator for the next six months. That is correct. So I have a couple of theories that I'm gonna use to uh, troubleshoot the solar system first. The first theory I have is that we've lost a panel uh, because roughly the current we're getting is about two thirds of the amount of current we should be getting, which if I do the math in my head, one panel isn't putting out. The problem is it could be the panel or it could be a connector or something too. So I'm gonna start with just going up and doing a visual inspection on all the connectors and just see if something somehow came unplugged, maybe. So that is a good place to start when you're troubleshooting electrical. Um, you wanna make sure that everything is still hooked up as it should be. Wires can come loose over time, like on the back of a receptacle or on the back of a switch. It does happen. So one of the realities of solar for us has been that it's not an everyday ordeal, but that is definitely a top of mind thing. You have to always be aware of what the system is doing. In our experience so far, solar is not a hands-off, plug it in and walk away uh, lifestyle. Solar should not be an everyday ordeal. You shouldn't even really need to even go and check on your batteries or anything like that. If you've sized your system properly and it's properly installed, it should be like set it and forget it. So it's done and it just works on its own. And that's all you have to do. So if your solar system is turning into an ordeal and you have to constantly think about it and monitor it, then it's not a properly designed system or it's not configured properly, either or. Zero change so far. Okay, so we're still at 13.7 to 13.9? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna move now back to panel number one and let's see if there's any change there. Uh, it's at about 14, 13.9. Okay, so that makes no sense why two panels is 14, but three panels is 18. So that is fine, which is what Jesse figures out at a later time, is that basically the charge controller, as the batteries get closer to being full, is that it restricts the amount of current that is going into them, like how fast you're being charged. Now I know that the size of our wiring 
is an issue because we're running, I think it's around 100 feet and we're running on 12 volts. Which is the main safety issue that I see with your solar system. So you've talked about how you have an excess of 25 amps going through that wire, which you can tell by looking at your charge controller. That wire is only rated for 20 amps. Plus, you're gonna be experiencing a tremendous amount of voltage drop over that length of wire because it's not sized properly either. So you're losing efficiency from the panels and it's also unsafe. So we're trying to push a lot of amperage through a fairly small wire. And that's not a good idea with solar, which is why these kind of low voltage RV type systems aren't really excellent for off gridding. They're okay. Which is why they should not be installed in the first place because it's not designed for that application. But they're meant to run very short wire runs. And when you're off gridding, like we are, you run pretty long wire runs. Which is why I would never advise anyone to install a system like this. That's why it's really ideal, if you can, to go to a higher voltage, both on the panel and on your charge controller. That way, when you run that high voltage on a long run of wire, you don't lose nearly as much current. But that requires a far more advanced charge controller to handle the higher voltages coming in. This is a perfect reason of why you should do things right the first time around. So I think that he's really learned about a lot of this stuff after the fact that they got everything set up. So it's just kind of more like, okay, we made a mistake, we kind of effed it up. Now let's do it the proper way because the amount of money that they put into this, I don't know how much it was, maybe between a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars. That's just like gonzo. They're not gonna be able to really even reuse those components, and I suggest that they don't reuse those components for their next solar system. And it's typical, when you first start out, you're going to use more budget type solar components, and you're gonna run into these restrictions. That is just that is just so not true. You don't have to start off with budget type components that are gonna put restrictions on your solar system. In fact, you should spend more time and more effort researching and saving money so that you can get a good solar system to begin with so that you don't have to deal with bullshit like this, trying to figure out what's wrong with it. Like our solar system's been running for four months and it just works. That's how your system should be. One of the other realities of solar is that you have components. To date, it's still a component industry where you've got batteries from one company, cables from another company, a charge controller from another company, wires from another company, and panels from another company. So a lot of people listening to this video would just be like, oh, that makes sense, but it's not true. Yes, there are a lot of different companies that make a lot of different components, but understanding how they work together and knowing the specs of those individual components means that you can make a system, even if it's a Frankenstein system, you can make it work. But what annoys me about this is that I know of two companies that will provide you everything that you need from batteries, panels, charge controllers, and inverters in order to get a working solar system. Two companies, Victron Energy and another company that you might be familiar with, which is Tesla. So you can go through Tesla, you can get their panels and their power wall, and that's got everything that you need. And it all works together because it's all designed properly together. Yes, there's a lot of different components that you can get out there, but you can get something that will work together. But if you know what you're doing, you can take any mixture of components and make them work. Um, GoPower has a lot of matched components, which is why we felt like we shouldn't have too many struggles and we don't know what part of this could just be rookie mistakes. I say this with all the love in my heart and this burrito in my hand. It's just rookie mistakes, Jesse. That's all it is. So we're learning as we go, which is awesome because we want to upgrade our system in the near future. And hopefully we'll have our training wheels off on solar by the time that day comes. You should never think to yourself that you want to upgrade your system within a year. That means that the original system you designed was not big enough. But this is one of those harsh realities of solar. You need to be prepared to ask for help. That's a good point. Even though I did my electrical apprenticeship for over four years, um, I still didn't know how to do solar because I'd never done it before. So I still had to ask for help, even after having all that experience with electrical. And I have to say that using the internet for support isn't always the best idea. You'll get a million ideas on how to make solar work on the internet. I totally agree with him as well because I was reading through the comments on this particular video about his solar installation and people are like giving him tips on how to fix it. And I'm like, this is just some of the worst advice that I've ever read about solar. And it's like the blind trying to lead the blind. It just doesn't work. 
Because solar is often dealing in large currents with low voltage, having access to meters for this stuff is not something you're just gonna find at your local big box store. See, the funny thing is, if you just set your system up the correct way the first time, you don't need a digital multimeter because it doesn't, you're not trying to troubleshoot anything. On top of that, having a digital multimeter that reads a very high amperage rating is not gonna help you fix this issue because the issue is not with how much amperage is going through the wires. It's just the issues is that you just don't understand how your solar system works. That's it. We have voltmeters, but they're limited on the amount of current that they can measure. So what you could have done to troubleshoot this, let me put this burrito down. So what you could have done, Jesse, is turn off all your disconnects, disconnect the panels, and then measure across each panel. And seeing just with the voltage, the DC voltage um, setting on your multimeter, and seeing what the voltage is, the voltage across all three of those panels. So if you measure each one individually, then they should all be relatively about the same. Then you know that the panels are not an issue. And so without buying a meter that costs as much as our solar system, it's challenging for us to do a lot of diagnostics on these systems. You can do pretty well everything that you need to do with like a $50 or a $70 multimeter. Um, for example, we still have this brownout issue with the transformer on our inverter, and I just don't have the equipment to test it. It's not the equipment that you think you need in order to test out what the problem is, it's just because it's probably not set up properly. You have to understand that this is not household electrical. This is pretty specialized low voltage. After wiring up AC systems for residential, commercial, and industrial, there's not a huge difference between AC and DC. There's not a huge enough difference to warrant it to be like, this is really specialized knowledge. With AC systems, alternating current systems, typically have a black wire and a white wire. With DC systems, which is direct current, you have a red wire and a black wire. And all you have to do is just know where they go and having the right tools to work on it, they're not readily available. Oh my God, I can't even believe he just said that. Anyways, so you don't need any specialized tools to do an off-grid solar project. So for our system, two things I had to buy, and you can get them both on Amazon for 70 bucks, all right? So they're not specialized tools. This was an MC4 crimper. So to make the MC4 connections that go between the solar panels. And then I bought this fancy hydraulic crimping tool, which I think was 60 bucks on Amazon. So this is so that I could make the little jumper cables using the welding wire that jumps the batteries to each other. This is not a specialized tool. You can even get cheaper ones for like 15 or 20 bucks. All the other tools that I use were screwdrivers, side cutters, diagonal cutters, wire strippers, and a knife and a hacksaw. And that was pretty much it that I can think of off the top of my head. And my impact drill. You don't need a bunch of fancy tools in order to do this. Don't let them scare you away, being that it's all like difficult and mysterious and it's impossible to do. It's very much possible to do. You guys saw me do it on this channel. I'm stilling the camera. Jesse has a revelation. You know what I'm, I'm thinking? Huh. I might have just had a freaking idiot moment. I think you did have an idiot moment. So. It's really important that if you're gonna be installing your own solar system, you have to understand how it actually works. And there's tons of resources on YouTube, on, on the internet as well. Um, if you're still not sure, talk to somebody who knows what they're doing. And when you see guys like this install their own system and it's not working properly and they have really no idea what's going on, do not take what they're saying as gospel. It's just their experience and it doesn't necessarily mean that's how it's gonna be. So our solar system, it's sized in such a way that we can run our air conditioner 24-7. We have an electric water heater, an electric pump that pumps up our, pressurizes our pressure tank. Um, all of our cooking appliances, there's a fridge that's always running. All of our cooking appliances, rice cooker, instant pot, electric cooktop, all of it runs on electricity. We don't have any gas or anything like that. So we had to design our system so that we could run all these things on electricity. So, but we don't have any of these issues that they're having. And obviously that also comes down to the fact that we've had to invest a lot more money into getting our system to where it is. So they're, I don't know how much they've spent on their system, maybe like a thousand or 1500 bucks or something like that. By the sounds of it, it hasn't been very much. And when you invest such a small amount of money into your solar system, you're gonna get shitty results, which is what they're experiencing. So they're definitely learning about this the hard way. The components that they have, I mean, they might be able to reuse their panels, but they're probably not gonna match the other panels that they buy if they upgrade their system. Um, what I would recommend for them 
is you guys got to do a lot more research on this kind of stuff because you're making a lot of very basic mistakes and you're actually creating a fire hazard in your home with not even having the wire sized properly and not knowing that your 12 gauge wire that you installed um, can't handle more than 20 amps safely like that's just not good and you're putting this information out there and you're doing a disservice to people unfortunately because they think that this is normal for solar but there's so many people not even just ourselves, but so many people around the United States, around the world, that have properly working solar systems that are sized properly and designed properly. So don't take this as if this is the way that it's going to be and you're going to have this little solar system that you can only run a few light bulbs in your refrigerator off of. You can run a lot of stuff on a properly sized solar system. So this is what really annoys me is because hundreds of thousands of people have watched this video and they're thinking to themselves, oh, this is how solar power is supposed to be. It's, it's difficult and you're always gonna have issues and it's like this ongoing ordeal. And it's like, no, just chalk it up as inexperienced and not educated enough on solar energy. So our system works fabulous, right? Like just set it, forget it, it works. We always have tons of energy for everything that we need. Like yeah, we run our air conditioner throughout the night. I'm gonna talk specifically about air conditioning and off-grid solar in a video I'm gonna record tomorrow morning. But just watching videos like this, I'm just like, oh my God. I can't believe that people are like, yeah, this is normal. Kind of frustrating, but just understand that this is not a normal situation, okay? So you can have a solar system that works great and is trouble-free. It doesn't have to be like this. Awesome. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you on the next video. Talk to you soon. Peace.